you know, Black Panther or something along those lines, whatever one I end up choosing. Uh, and then everything else should come up fine. I want my fail type to be wave, a 48 kilohertz sample rate. Um, the location I do want to change though. I want it, you always want to make sure you change your location. And where am I changing it to? So I'm going to go to Tom 328 projects. And I'm going to say use current folder once I'm in there, because it's going to make a folder for my project. All right, so I named it, and then I'm going to click create, and it's going to create a new project. And Meg is going to go over some more of like the basics, because usually when I teach this class too, we do go over the basics, because you are going to, you know, the, even if you've used it once, that's not a lot of time using it. So, so she will go back over like fading and trimming and all that sort of stuff. So today I'm just showing you the ADR ideas, all right? Uh, so first of all, the first thing I need to do is import my video. And so I go to File, Import. And so you'll see the choices here, audio, right? So if I needed to import my Foley or my ambient sounds, I would go to audio and import those sounds. But in this case, I want to load in my video. So I'm going to go to video. And I believe that the clips are up on Exercise Media. And or is it in Tom328? Ah, here we go. It's on Com328, ADR and Foley Media. Here's the three clips. Uh, so let's uh, let's choose uh, get out. So click open, and it's going to take a second because it uh, takes a second for the video engine to launch. So it does always take a moment uh, when you import a video, and then it's going to ask uh, where do I want the video to start, and I'm just going to choose I want it to start at the start of the session, right at the at the beginning of my timeline. So I click OK to that. And then it's going to open up a window because it needs to convert the audio file from the video into a WAV file to work in Pro Tools. And so I just say use current folder. It puts it in the right folder automatically. As long as I save my project to the right folder, everything else will go to the right folder. If I didn't save my project to the right folder, everything will go to that bad project that wherever you saved that file to. All right, so this is going where I saved it to. So as long as I saved it to projects, I should be fine. I click use current folder. All right, and then now I have my window to watch the video clip. And we can see here in my timeline, and I'm just gonna slide this over, right? I can see I have a video track, and then I have the audio track, which is the audio from the film. All right, and if I press play, what about your mother? Which is spacebar, right? I can watch the video and hear the sound what at the same time. Wait, are we? You are worried about right. to die. Yes. You did not make an audio track for that. Like, uh, it, it automatically does. When I import the video, it automatically makes the video and audio and, and separates them like this. It auto pretty much, the, when I said use the current folder, that was it saying making the audio track. All right, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You it sure? Does, does. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, other questions? Okay. So the next part is the hardest part. This is, this is the trick. Uh, so first thing I need is, you'll need to rent a microphone, a tabletop mic stand, and obviously the microphone will come with an XLR cable, and you'll also need a pair of headphones. You absolutely need to do this with headphones, all right? Mm -hmm. So you'll need to reserve these all for, you know, you're going to need to find actors or performers to be these voices. So, you know, this one only has two voices, so that's a little bit easier. Uh, Clueless has a lot of voices. So that one makes that one a little bit more challenging that you have to have a lot of characters. Um, so you'll reserve this for the days that you get your talent to come. And I just want to pop my mic in. And this will work on any of these computers and the computers in the edit suites 115, 123, and 125A. 125B is not set up for this. So do not reserve 125B for this project. Um, 117 will also work, but it's just a little bit trickier. So if you did end up needing to use 117 because of the other, just come and see me and I can get you set up in there. It's just, you have to use a different audio driver, but it is working and you could do this in those rooms, in that room as well, all right? Um, so come see me one-on-one -on -one and I'll show you if you want to use 117, okay? 
Huh? Which is that room right there. Um, set up my mic. And so all of the focus rights, right, these red boxes, uh, have an audio input on the front, including those on your computers. And then in the edit suites, the same red boxes are on the desks in the edit suites. And so what I want to do is I want to plug this into input one. And we'll have a little one over top so I know that it's input one. And of course, I'm going to hear myself now. Um, and so I'm just going to turn this down for one second and I'll have to bring it back up. But this is one of the reasons that you need headphones is because otherwise you can start feeding back if you're trying to listen to things through these speakers. But also, it will also, you'll hear that recording of the dialogue coming through the original dialogue, which you don't want. Um, so I'm going to hook up my headphones on this, right? You know, all these have headphone outputs. So I'm going to set this to my headphones here. into the red box, all right? So the next thing that I need to do is I need to make an extra audio track, right? This is where I'm gonna record my dialogue. And I will actually need to make, usually I make an, a dialogue, a track per character. So I have one track for the character who's the, playing the, the psychiatrist and one track for the character who is the uh, hypnist, uh, the hypnotized kid. Um, so, but in this case, I'm just gonna make one to make a new track. I go to track new, and I'm going to make a mono track. It, it comes up with the right settings automatically. Again, most of the settings for this come up correctly. You just usually just have to click OK. Unless, like, if I if I needed it to be stereo, if I were in recording in stereo, which when you're doing dialogue like this, there's not a reason to record it in stereo. So, uh, so I'm creating a new mono track, and now I've got a new mono track down here. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to set up this track to record, that I'm recording directly into Pro Tools from this microphone, all right? And to do that, I want to turn on the I.O. for my track headers. This little icon right here that looks like uh, columns, this sets up what I see in my track headers, right? Like I see inserts A through E is checked, and the track color and marker controls are checked. Uh, I want to turn on I.O., right, which is in out. And that will turn on this column here, right? And I will see that this is getting input one and is going to outputs one and two, which is exactly what I want, all right? Um, if I plugged into input two, I could go down to interface and input two and then record from input two, you know, if I plugged into input two instead. But obviously, in this case, I want input one, which is perfect. Now... Before I go on, I'm going to go find that preference. There is a preference that you have to change, and I, it's going to take me a second to find it, because I don't, I, I, I always take me a second to find it. So I'm under operation, here we go. So again, that was under uh, setup, preferences, and in this window, I go to the operation tab, and I want to check the box for automatically create new playlists when loop recording, because that's what we're going to be doing is loop recording. So I need to check that box. Very, very important. If you don't check that box, it won't do, it will only record one, uh, um, one voiceover, one, one line. And you want to record like it multiple times. Cause you'll see, it takes a little while to get into sort of the rhythm of doing the dialogue. You'll see it's, it's a little bit weird. So I check that box and I click okay. And then I'm going to right click on this play button up here and say loop. And I'm going to right click on the record button and say loop. All right, I need to set the controls up to be loop recording and I need it to turn on the loop recording for playlists. All right, questions so far? Um, I just wanted to know what kind of jack goes into the thing for the microphone. Like, is it the headphone one or is it a different thing? Oh, it's just, for well, it's the same. It's just the headphone. You plug it, I'm, I'm just plugged into the headphone jack. Okay, all right. For the headphones. And then the mic is just plugged into the XLR input on the front there. Number one. Okay. Oh, number, okay, all right. Sorry, that was, that was confused about. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Uh, other questions? Okay. 
All right, so I'm almost ready. Uh, I need to change my track to playlists. Uh, students who have had Pro Tools before know that where it says waveform in this drop down, this changes how I view my track. And so this is where when I want to do a fade, I go into volume and I can adjust the, that line and control the volume. Or I could pan and pan this back and forth. Uh, but in here, one of the options is playlists. And what playlist recording does is it records multiple takes and then only take, you can, you basically then select from that list of takes which take you actually want on your main timeline. And then you can sort of hide all the rest, but you'll still, it will save them and you can go back to them later. It, it's a really great tool for doing voiceover and voice recording. Uh, so I'm going to turn on playlist and you'll see it adds this little playlist down at the bottom. All right. So now I'm going to find a line of dialogue that I'm going to uh, uh, record. And you want to do one, like one line at a time. All right, don't try to do something too long. It's too difficult. You're literally recording one line at a time. So I'm going to find and, and create a loop. So I'm just clicking and dragging up in the time to create a little loop. And I'm going to turn the volume up. Okay, that seems like a pretty good loop for me to do dialogue-wise. Dialogue -wise. So I'm going to select that loop again. Here we go. And now I'm going to activate recording for this track to say I'm going to be recording on this track. And I'm turning the volume down in the room, right? I turn the volume down coming through the speakers because now I just want it coming through the headphones. Okay? So I'm going to pop on my headphones and I'm going to hit record and play up here and then I'm going to hear it loop that over and over and I'm going to try to do the dialogue with it and it's going to take me like eight to ten times usually to get it right. I don't want to think about that. 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 I don't want to think about Okay, so did a bunch of takes of it, and so I'm going to turn off recording on this track, and I am going to bring the volume back up so we can hear it, and so I'm going to mute by the original audio, and so we're going to watch this with my audio. I don't want to think about that. All right, do I like that take? I don't know. I can solo these other takes and listen to the other takes if I want. And that one I didn't actually record anything on, it's actually flat. But uh, now I'll solo this one. I don't want to think about that. All right, terrible. I don't want to think about that. Ugh, awful. I don't want to think about that. And my timing was off. Right, you see, it's like, I think like, and usually like I do it until I feel like it's right. You know what I mean? Like you kind of have to feel it out for yourself. I do think the last one was, was the best one. But if I did say, decide that I wanted this clip instead, I like this take, I select that clip with the hand tool. And then you'll see that there's this up arrow highlighted and I click up and that swaps that out. So basically now the other take came down here and this take went up to the top. All right. I can control Z to undo that if I want to. Let's say I liked half of one take and half of another. I could select a range here and push that up and then that would be the two different takes combined together. All right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Questions?